I'm a plumber and I worked hard my entire life. I started working full time when I was 17 years old. Most of my work weeks are at least 50 hours. Nothing on the job front has changed in the past 50 years. I'm still a plumber. I still work at least 50 hours each week. I married young and have four kids. I think I raised them well. I can honestly say I did my best. They all live good lives and have families of their own now. It's just me and my wife now. To be blunt, that's probably why I still work such long hours. My life is more peaceful when I work. I suppose the biggest mistake I've made in my life was marrying so young. I was 18 when I married Jane. She was a hell of a lot nicer then than she is now, although even back then she was no picnic. Chalk it up to me being young and stupid when I made that important decision. My nickname for her is Miss Cranky. Can you guess why? Miss Cranky is always nagging me. She's always on my back. No matter what I do, it's not good enough. We would have gotten a divorce a long while ago if it weren't for the kids. Now that the kids are all grown up and gone, I'm not sure why we stay together. We don't like each other. At this point, it's just habit, I suppose. My entire life I never had a vacation, not once, and when I randomly entered the sweepstakes for a free seven-day beach vacation, I certainly didn't expect to win, but I did. Seven days and seven nights in an oceanfront condo. I couldn't believe it. Of course, Miss Cranky wasn't interested in going. She didn't have the right wardrobe. She didn't want to get on a plane. She didn't want to get sand all over everything. I told her she didn't have to go, I'd go alone. But she knew if I went by myself that I'd have a good time, and she couldn't have that. So, she reluctantly tagged along and complained in my ear the entire time. The vacation package we won included several add-ons, such as a snorkeling lesson, a glass-bottom boat tour, and deep-sea fishing. Miss Cranky didn't want to do any of it and refused to allow me to do any of them alone. Yes, I needed to stand up to her more. I needed more backbone. But it was as though she chipped that part of me away over the years and I just wasn't able to. I did stand my ground on the deep sea fishing adventure though. I loved fishing when I was a kid. I used to go with my dad all the time before I got married. It would be nice to do it again after all these years. So I begged Miss Cranky to let me go. Finally, she grudgingly gave in and allowed it. The deep sea fishing adventure took place on a fancy yacht. It was owned by the rich guy who owned the company that held the contest. It turns out it wasn't just any yacht. It was a luxury yacht. It had three levels. It was immaculate. One of the other passengers told me the thing probably cost 10 million bucks. Of course, Miss Cranky wasn't thrilled with it. She thought the floors were ugly, and there was too much wood trim, and the windows were dirty, and that it smelled like fish. I ignored her and was enjoying myself. The millionaire stopped the yacht when he saw some sharks. We were pretty close to the shore, but he said it wasn't uncommon for the sharks to swarm in shallow waters if they had reason to. He mentioned that this was a good opportunity for us all to experience a shark feeding frenzy. The millionaire had one of his crew drop a bunch of fish guts in the water. They called it chumming the waters. It attracted all kinds of sharks far and wide. They were all hostile as they splashed about, battling for every bit of fish carcass they could sink their intimidating teeth into. It was a breathtaking sight. I had never seen anything like it. The millionaire chuckled when he said, I'll give a million dollars to anyone brave enough to jump ship and swim to shore. 
When I hit the water, I was shocked at how cold it was. I swear my heart stopped for a second, but then it started back up as a jolt of adrenaline flowed through my body and suddenly my heart was about to beat out of my chest. The stench of rotten fish was in the air and the splashing of the massive sharks was thunderous. I gazed around at the bloody waters I found myself bobbing in. I felt the muscular solid bodies of the sharks crashing against me. This was the day I was going to die. But I wasn't going down without a fight, so I swam. I swam with all of my might. I was amazed at how fast I was going. I can only assume it was one of those superhuman feats that you hear about when lives are on the line. And in this case, it was my life we were talking about. Even with the progress I was making, sharks were thrashing about all around me and bumping into me every few seconds. When I felt the razor teeth of one of the smaller sharks sink into my calf, I figured I was a goner, but it let me go immediately and swam off. I'm sure the bite hurt, but I wasn't feeling any pain. My adrenaline was pushing that to the side and allowing me to become an Olympic swimmer for a few minutes. As I got closer to the shore, the amount of sharks surrounding me decreased. That was the time I was most frightened, when it seemed like I was well past the most frenzied of the swimming beasts. I figured the second I felt safe, one of them would latch onto my body and shake me like a rag doll until I was in pieces, like so many of the fish they devoured. It didn't happen though. I made it to the shore. I survived with relatively minor injuries. I could hear the majority of the people on the yacht hooting and hollering and cheering. They couldn't believe I did it. And neither could I. One of the millionaire's crew members who was on the beach helped me to my feet. I guess they clued him in via walkie-talkie as to what happened. He was astonished and awestruck. You're a brave man! It took me several minutes to catch my breath before I could reply back. <laughs> brave nothing. She pushed me! I looked back at the yacht, at all the cheering, joyous people. My cranky, evil wife stood next to them with a look of disappointment. Apparently she thought it was a win-win situation for her. If I died, she'd rack up a nice bundle of life insurance money. If I lived, we'd be millionaires. What my wife didn't count on was the shark-infested waters replacing my backbone. One of the other passengers on the yacht captured the entire event on his cell phone. Even though he was half kidding, the millionaire followed through on his statement and rewarded me with one million dollars. I divorced my wife and got everything. She'll be living the rest of her life in prison. As for me, I retired and bought me a condo with an ocean view. I go fishing every single day.